if you are someone who is about to submit their thesis and you are thinking about what to do next what after your phd then this is something that you might want to watch till the end whenever students are submitting their thesis they are starting to search for jobs they will go after looking for postdoctoral fellowships also and you don't know exactly what to do so let me explain the meaning of postdoctorate for you so postdoctorate is any work which is basically research work it is not academic work it is research work which is done after your phd for you to get any postdoctoral fellowship you should have submitted your thesis minimum in today's video i am going to speak about five such top postdoctoral fellowships which are active that means they are currently accepting applications the deadline may be over but the applications are still on in this video i am going to share my knowledge about postdoctoral fellowship which can be done in india now i know that there are several postdoctoral fellowships that can be done abroad and i also have done several videos about this you have commonwealth fellowships you have a uh, fulbright fellowships then you have a uh, swiss fellowships so there are different fellowships that can be done abroad and i will do a separate video for that for today's video i will stick to postdoctoral fellowships that can be done in india so what are we waiting for without further ado let's begin before i move ahead with the different fellowships let me clarify one thing the postdoctoral fellowship amount has got changed okay so earlier it was around 50 to 55000 now your per month salary would be 65000 for most of the postdoctoral fellowships and you will also get a contingency grant of around 50000 rupees per year okay so if if i don't speak about the amount in each of the fellowships you can assume that this is the amount some fellowships will have a higher pay and i am going to definitely let you know about that the first one and the top fellowships that you can apply to is inspire faculty fellowship i am not speaking about the inspire fellowship which is there the regular one this is a postdoctoral fellowship so for this you need to be an indian origin person you can be a pio also you should have the citizenship of this country you should have submitted your thesis or should have completed your defense science mathematics engineering pharmacy agricultural or any discipline related to science basically is eligible for this you should be having 60 percentage of marks first class throughout and the duration of this fellowship would be 5 years also publications in reputed journals would be appreciated apart from this your age limit should be 32 years for general category if you are a women candidate or sc st candidate then there is a relaxation of a couple of years when it comes to this age limit the most important part of this fellowship which distinguishes it from all the different other fellowships is its salary okay so the salary that you are going to receive as an inspire faculty fellow is 125000 per month currently i don't know of any other fellowship post doctoral fellowship that pays you this much post your phd you will also get an increment of 2000 rupees in this salary per year so you will get it 5 years every year 2 to 2000 will increase apart from this you will get a research grant separately of 7 lakh rupees per year you can use this to buy equipments to chemicals and a sort of contingency amount if you are interested in doing your post doc at indian institute of science bangalore which is the most premier institute in the country and as per nirf rank also it holds the first rank in all the research institutes okay so if you are looking to do that then cv raman post doctoral fellowship is for you these are all the disciplines in which you can do research over there you can definitely pause the video and have a look phd first class throughout your academics is a criteria and your age should be less than 32 years the duration of this would be 1 year and your per month salary would be 1.15 lakhs per month apart from this you will also get a research grant of 8 lakh rupees per year 
the next post doctoral fellowship is our own iit madras fellowships so there are three categories for this under post doctoral fellowships only first you have ibse fellowships the duration would be one to two years depending on your goal okay depending on how long it will take and secondly this one is specifically to subjects which include biology and engineering so if you have worked in your phd in any topic which combines both these two things then this is something that you might want to consider phd within last two years proficiency in programming languages such as these and contribution to open source projects that would be a plus monthly stipend as well as funds for attending conferences and different other um, events is something that you are going to get in this these are all the subjects which you will get under this particular fellowship the next one under iit madras fellowships only is iit madras post doctoral fellowship okay so this is the institute fellowship and this is not affiliated to specific subjects as such phd within last 5 years and your age limit should be 35 years you should be below 35 years for you to apply if you are a student of iit madras itself then this is not for you because this is uh, specially designed for students which have not done their phd at iit madras the next one is iit madras post doctoral fellowship for women those who have had their break in career so this this is a special kind of post doctorate which is specially for women and those women candidates who have done their phd's but they have had gaps in between their careers so they are encouraged to apply for this these are all the subjects where you can apply you can pause the video and have a look also you should not be employed while you are applying for this post doctoral fellowship okay not just for this fellowship i should have mentioned it before for all post doctoral fellowship you cannot be in a regular employment while applying for this particular fellowship your salary would be 58000 per month you will also get travel reimbursement by train ticket okay class 2 ac fare that you will get from here to iit madras the next fellowship that we have is wise post doctoral fellowship now i have done a video about their phd fellowships wise kiran dst wise fellowships and actually that is a video which took off on my channel okay i have got so many comments so many questions regarding it so i did another video for it and in today's video i want to share about wise post doctoral fellowship so if you know anything about wise fellowships it is specifically for women and so is this one 27 to 60 years is the age bracket where you can apply and science and technology remains at the core of dst wise fellowships not just post doctoral but even their phd fellowships the duration is 3 years and these are all the subjects where you can apply a phd in basic or applied sciences you should not be in regular employment and also if you have a break in career then you are encouraged to apply that does not mean that if you do not have a break in career you are not going to get accepted in this as i had explained about iit madras women's fellowship in this one break in career is not mandatory but even if you have got a break in career then also you are eligible to apply for this you will get 67000 per month okay for the duration and you will also get a research grant of 2 lakh rupees per year the best part about this is this fellowship is open throughout the year for your proposal so you can submit your applications any time of the year now let's move on to the last one which is called as a research associateship okay now research associateship or a post doctorate these this is like a gamble of words okay but basically whether it is research associateship or whether it is a regular post doc you are supposed to do both after your phd okay now what is the basic difference between ra ship and post doctoral fellowship now ra ship is more like a job so it's like it's like a contractual job okay and post doc has the features similar to your phd 
although a postdoc won't be as taxing as your PhD, but these differences are really minor and you can definitely consider RAship if you are not getting admission for postdoc or if you are searching for a job and you are not getting anything. The two main RA ships which are present, which I know of, are CSIR RA ship. Here it's specifically for science and engineering backgrounds. If you have ME, MPharm and even these other degrees with three years of research experience without a PhD, then also you are eligible for RA ship. So this is one criteria which is there only in RA ship for postdoc you have to have your PhD for you to apply. The duration would be for one year, you should be having a reputed publication. Also your age should be below 35 years for this. The total tenure for this is three years. When I checked their website for the stipend amounts, then I realized that it was not updated. So I don't want to confuse you by telling you the previous amounts. The amounts which you get for RA ship now are changed and it was not reflecting on the website and at least the material which I came across. Okay, so whenever there is RA ship call for CSIR or for DBT, which I'm going to speak about it next, then I will definitely put up the brochure and the details on my channels as well. The next RA ship is for DBT. Okay, and if you are watching this video right now, then the call for this is currently on. So if you are a PhD in science or related disciplines, related to life sciences specifically because DBT is Department of Biotechnology. So you have to apply in those particular disciplines. The upper age limit for this is 40 years and the duration for this is two years with a scope for increment. Okay. One thing to note about RA ships is that you can avail of these scholarships once in your career, not more than that. Okay. Most of the RA ships. Now I have said in the title that five fellowships I'm going to speak about postdoctoral fellowship and this is the sixth one that I have to speak I cannot miss out because this was launched just last month I have done a dedicated video on this and it is AICTE postdoctoral fellowship okay so they have launched PhD as well as postdoctoral fellowship and the stipend is on par with all the funding agencies which are present in the country you will get around 65 to 67000 per month also you will get a con a contingency amount of 50000 per year okay so if you are interested in something like that then do check out that video i have elaborated in detail on it so i didn't feel the need to include that in depth in this particular video but nevertheless that is also a funding opportunity that i don't want you to miss now i have told you about so many fellowships when do you exactly apply for this you start preparing your application when you are about to submit your thesis okay because for you to apply for this your thesis has to be at least submitted so as soon as your thesis is submitted, you can start applying for this. But you need to have your research proposal and other documentation ready that you can do before your submission of thesis. So everything happens on time. And most of these fellowships do not have any particular deadline. However, there is Inspire Faculty Fellowship, which usually launches in June. Then CSIR, DBT Research Associateship, launch depending on the number of vacancies which are there so we don't really know on this channel i will keep making videos about this postdoc fellowship as well as phd fellowship so you can stay tuned for that and if there are any suggestions then you are most welcome also postdoc is a good way of spending your time and earning money when you are not getting a job because the job market is quite competitive, things take their own time and postdoc fellowships are relatively easy. I'm not saying they are easiest, but getting admission to a postdoc is relatively easy as compared to a regular job. So this is something that you might want to consider if you are nearing your thesis submission. Once you start 
nearing your thesis submission you keep thinking about what are the ways and what to do so i hope this video is somewhere providing that insight to you with that it's a wrap till the next time bye